how Auburn is going to use Perry Thompson this season, it's truly fascinating to me. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. It's a happy hour edition of the show, so thank you so much for making us either your first or second listen every single day. I'm your host, Zach Black. I mean, of course, Locked On Auburn is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The things that Hugh Freeze says about Peyton Thorne is what every other fan base would love for their head coach to say about their quarterback. That's coming up. But first things first on this happy hour edition of the show, I want to talk about the, this fascinating case that is Perry Thompson and how the Auburn Tigers are going to use him this season. Because I think proper context is important when talking about anything, but specifically Perry Thompson. Because what we have here is a situation where if, if Auburn would have landed a player like Perry Thompson, specifically at the wide receiver position, they would have been almost forced into being a day one star because he's so much better than the level of talent that we typically add over the past decade and beyond at the wide receiver position. But the curious thing about this is the way Hugh Freeze and the rest of this coaching staff have accumulated talent at the wide receiver position that is kind of going up against the trend of what Auburn has typically done at the wide receiver position. And you look at what Perry Thompson is, a high four-star this past recruiting cycle. I don't know what his role is in the offense this season. When any other year, he would have probably been asked to be at least the number two, if not higher, receiver in the offense which is the situation you want to be in, but it's this weird balance of, man, we want to see Perry Thompson right away. We fought so hard to get him. There was so much excitement when he flipped from Bama to Auburn a year ago at Big Cat Weekend. And part of it is like, is he owed some, some recognition maybe earlier than he should? And, and to me, I'm totally okay with all of that. But it's interesting because now, with the addition of Cam Coleman, who went through spring, with the addition of Keandre Lambert-Smith, with the addition of Robert Lewis this past December, Camden Brown taking a step forward, Sam Jackson, however they choose to use him, and then obviously Rivaldo Fairweather, he's going to get his targets, as he should. It's just an interesting situation because you're looking at a guy like in Perry who would normally be, even as a true freshman, not going through spring, your number two or number three option, and now he might be your number four or your number five option which long-term is probably the best-case scenario for Perry because he's not rushed into anything, less likely for injury, less likely for, you know, two real, uh, you know, I guess more realistic expectations. But last Wednesday at the ambush event in Dallas, I asked Coach Free specifically about Perry Thompson, and I think he says a lot of, hey, he's really good, but let's hold up. Here, here's, uh, here's that interaction. Perry Thompson, now on campus, didn't go through spring, but obviously incredibly talented. Does, does it change how you coach a true freshman that doesn't go through spring when you probably want to use them this fall? Yeah, he's got to spend a lot more time on his own studying the installs. He's you know a little behind, but again, this is, this is not something that's really new to football. I mean, it used to be that's when you got them all and you still got them ready. And, and so you're just never sure how freshmen are going to respond, really. And uh, Perry is talented. He's going to be a heck of a football player. I hope he does it in year one. But it's a little early to, to tell, and I certainly don't want to cast unreal expectations on a freshman who's going to roll out and play against, you know, arguably one of some of the best athletes in, in the country that play corner. I mean, that's those are some really good athletes, and some of them are old and mature. And um, But I'm excited about those young receivers for sure. Yeah, so obviously high praise for Perry, but I think Coach Freeze wants to set realistic expectations to the fan base, a fan base that we're all guilty of it. We want a lot, and we want it right now. I think it's okay, but I think tempering expectations for Perry Thompson is important. About a month ago, maybe closer to two months now, as the summer's flown by, I had a conversation with somebody within the program, and I asked, this was shortly after Perry and the rest of the freshmen got on campus, the guys who didn't go through spring. And I'm like, what's the, 
what's the plan? Like, what's the expectation? Do you want Perry Thompson to be, my specific question was, do you want Perry Thompson to be part of the offensive plan going into fall? And without skipping a beat, the answer was, we want him to be, but that's on Perry. And that kind of lines up with what Coach Free said when I asked that question that I just played for you, is he's having to do a lot of stuff on his own because he didn't go through spring. He's behind. There's no other way to put it. If you didn't go through spring, you're behind. I think we saw that with Peyton Thorne a year ago and a lot of these guys that were added over the summer. You're just at a disadvantage when you don't go through spring. Jake Crane, friend of the program, said it, and, and I've stolen this several times, but you build your team in the spring, you get ready for the season in the fall. And so when you're building a lot of your installs and, and building your offense with a new offensive coordinator and Coach Freeze kind of taking the reins, you want to be there if you're going to be a key part of the offense. So it's just a fascinating dynamic to me because any other year, Perry Thompson would be a guy who was like, I don't care that you didn't go through spring. You're better than everybody else we got. We've got to find a way to get you the ball and put you in the offense. And now Auburn has this luxury of you don't have to rush Perry Thompson anymore. Now, do I think Perry will be a part of the offense this season? Yes, 100%. Especially if, if there is an injury, which sadly Auburn has had a rough go when it comes to keeping wide receivers healthy in the recent, uh, in the past few seasons. I mean, we saw it even in spring. So if one guy goes down, specifically if it's an outside guy or if a guy misses two or three games, yeah, the, the path for, for playing time for Perry Thompson, it's there. And odds are that will happen. I mean, that happens across the SEC like on a pretty regular basis. I think we just kind of hope, one, that it's limited for whoever is injured or misses time, but also that it's a, a little bit into the season. I, I think Perry Thompson, and a lot of you agree because I've seen your comments on the YouTube videos, is the expectation for Perry in the second half of the season is far higher than the first half of the season. And you can say that about most freshmen, right? Like we probably feel that way about Cam Coleman as well. And honestly, some of these other guys like Keandre Lambert-Smith who missed spring, it's like, is he going to take some time to get acclimated and installed into the system possibly i mean we saw this last year with all the transfer wide receivers that auburn brought in and some of them never even cracked the rotation uh to be part of the offense so it's just a tricky dynamic and it's a tricky situation but what a great situation auburn's in at the wide receiver position compared to where they have been historically i don't know if you guys missed it or not or, or, or saw it but uh my conversation with matt moscona that i put up on the the second show yesterday on Wednesday's show just talking about the, like the lack of upside of, of wide receiver in Auburn's history well that's gone that's gone in fact I think when we when we talk about the Hugh Freeze era 10 or 15 years from now I think that's going to be the time where it's like oh Auburn finally got modern competitive wide receivers and Perry Thompson is going to be part of that and obviously Cam Coleman Bryce Kane Malcolm Simmons I think they're all going to be part of that conversation. I also asked Hugh Freeze last week about Peyton Thorne. And what he says, the way he talks about Peyton Thorne is how every other fan base would want their head coach to talk about their quarterback. And so many Auburn fans are just dismissing it. That's up next, right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy tickets, whether it's for sports, whether it's for a concert, whether it's for the theater, or uh, any kind of form of stand-up comedy. I'm, in fact, going to uh, a concert in two weeks over in Atlanta. I bought the tickets over uh, at Game Time. Excuse me. It took two seconds. In fact, it was kind of a, a spur-of-the-moment purchase where uh, we were at dinner. My wife and I, we were talking about uh, an artist that we both like coming to town. And we're like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. And, and it took two seconds. It took two seconds. Daryl talks about all the time in these live reads where you pull up game time and you're looking for tickets. You, you want to look for the number that's next to the lightning bolt, these flash deals that they've got. That's exactly what we did. And uh, they're always a great deal. So head over to game time. It's a free app. Just download it on your phone's app store and use code locked on college. All one word locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. You'll be glad that you did. Uh, yeah, be sure to check out our friends at Game Time. Thank you to Game Time for sponsoring today's show. The way Hugh Freeze talks about Peyton Thorne is how any fan should want their head coach to talk about 
and view their starting quarterback, their returning quarterback. And I feel like we're just looking past it. Hugh Freeze has a national reputation of being a, a great quarterback coach, a great offensive mind. And there are so many Auburn fans that are in this anti Peyton Thorn way of thinking that they're dismissing all of this. They're dismissing the fact that Hugh Freeze knows quarterbacks, that Hugh Freeze knows how to score points in the SEC. And they're like, oh, I can't believe he's stuck with Peyton Thorne. Well, maybe he knows something. Maybe he knows something about offense and knows something about quarterbacks, and he's seen what he needs to see from Peyton Thorne. So I, I asked him I asked him this question last week about his quarterback, and his answer, I mean, he's all in. He's all in on Thorne. Coach, Peyton Thorne's been a big topic at media days this week. What do you need to see from him you know, before the season starts to get to where he needs to be? I've been pleased with everything I've seen with him from January until now. Um, I think what we need to see from him is a lot of people around him making plays when, when the opportunity arises and him making the correct decisions and being, throwing accurate balls and deciphering whether it's a run or a throw and, and what we're trying to do. And I'm, I'm really a Peyton Thorne fan as a leader and, and as a young man. And uh, I'm excited and cautiously optimistic that uh, you're going to see a good product from him. So the, the interesting thing about this is there's two things that he said. There's one where he talks about, okay, he's done everything he needs to do this year, which is what you want to hear. And it sounds like the kind of guy that Peyton Thorne is. It sounds like he is putting in the work. But then when he compliments his traits, his characteristics, it kind of lines up with what he said consistently. And a lot of that's off the field stuff. Leadership, attitude, work ethic, and all that's great. But at some point, it's like he needs to be more accurate or he's made better decisions on a more consistent basis. And we've seen that in, in, you know, in practices or in, in these workouts that have been over over the summer. And so like, he, he's all in. And he says he's a Peyton Thorne fan, which is good. You want your head coach to believe in your starting quarterback. And that's what Hugh Freeze is doing to Peyton Thorne. And at some point, I think we're overthinking this to some extent, to the section of the fan base that's anti Thorne, no matter what he does, you're going to kind of nitpick and find ways to, to, to spin it and make it his fault. His two seconds to throw or his wide receivers dropping passes consistently a year ago or, or whatever it may be. I've said it pretty consistently. Like I don't think Peyton Thorne is a perfect quarterback by any stretch of the imagination, but he's not as bad as folks are making it out to be. And he was not put into a situation to succeed a year ago. And Hugh Freeze knows this. How do we know that he knows this? Because he fired his offensive coordinator. He went in and got a, an offensive coordinator that he trusts from Ole Miss and Derek Nix. And he says, hey, I'm taking over and I'm staking my reputation on the offense because I'm calling plays this year and this is my offense again. And I just think if Hugh Freeze thought Peyton Thorne couldn't handle it and couldn't win nine games this year for Auburn, I think he would have found somebody else. I think he would have found somebody else. I think he knew, okay, I'm going to do what I did at Ole Miss, and I'm going to have solid quarterbacks, not great quarterbacks, but solid quarterbacks, and surround them with weapons where it makes it easier to play quarterback. And that's what he did. That's what he did. All these guys we just talked about, I mean, we just had a conversation about Perry Thompson being Auburn's fourth or fifth option in the, in the receiving game. When last year, Perry Thompson would have been the best option and the receiving game outside of maybe Rivaldo Fairweather. It, the difference here that a lot of us are just overlooking, it's pretty astounding. It's pretty astounding. So all in all, I, I thought those two answers were um, were pretty revealing, were pretty cool, um, kind of giving us a glimpse of, of how Hugh Freeze is approaching these two big um, storylines going into fall camp, both with Perry Thompson and obviously Peyton Thorne. So, hey, thank you guys for tuning in to our happy hour edition of the show. Of course, if you missed this morning's edition of the show, we talked Big Cat Weekend and recruiting with Brian Smith. So be sure to check that out. And, of course, on tomorrow morning's show, Daryl Dapperich joins us. We'll talk Big Cat Weekend and, uh, and a whole lot more. Please like the video. Please subscribe and read all of our written work at AuburnDaily.com. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.